every game, it's going to be crucial who Neil decides to trash last. But let's get into Swiss round seven, our second winning in of the day here in Honolulu. Iron Hands Calyrex Ice Rider is the lead for Nils Dunlop versus Daniel Zitko with Coridon and Fluttermane. That is some boosted uh, protosynthesis synergy. I mean, you're talking too about the difficulty of what what to Terra over on Nils end. But I think in this case, it's a little bit more clear. This Calyrex definitely gets pressured quite well. Sure, you do have a fake out option on your end to stop, stop this Coridon. But at the same time, then the Fluttermane can try and deal some damage. I'm curious here too, if this Calyrex, you just want to go straight out onto the offensive. Because if the Splutter main clicks in prison, it's going to be locking down that trick room and making sure, sure that Calyrex does nothing this turn and the speed advantage is always going to be in Neil's favor. So that is the biggest thing to kind of keep an eye out for. And since Splutter main, of course, is that ghost type, well, the Iron Hands can't fake it out. Right, that's a really good call out that the Imprison on Fluttermane, not a move you see too often. Imprison kind of just, it's not a move that you use for your benefit, you use it to slow your opponent down. You stop their strategy. If Nils wants to go for Trick Room and you click the uh, you click the Imprison, it's not gonna be able to. But Daniel, Terrasalizing Coridon here on turn one. I was so taken aback by the Coridon, I forgot this little boy has a Cobra Cloak on him. He's not getting picked out at all. So being able to see the Terrasalization not on one, but both sides of the field makes a lot of sense here. Since it can't get picked out, it can go ahead and go on the go button. So the Calyrex Terrasalization makes a lot of sense. Two fire types being added onto the field here via Terrasalization, the heat in Honolulu starting to get hotter on the field. Collision course from Coridon towards Iron Hands on the other end. That does over 50% with the help from the sun boosting that damage. Low kick towards Coridon retaliates with a lot of damage, but now that he's a fire type, this Glitchalance is gonna be resisted. Flutterman hangs on with its focus edge and Coridon hanging on thanks to that resisted attack. Ooh, a lot of damage going on to Daniel's end of the board to be starting things off. And without the Drassalization, could have been a very different story. And great call from Nils to not go ahead and go for that Trick Room. Instead, this Glacial Lens bringing the Flutter Main down to one and the amount of damage on the crowd. I'm sure that pickup would have been nice, but at the same time, you're definitely in a nice spot. One Pokemon getting out, Amoongus joins the field, and it's going to be taking this hit a lot better as Collision Course yet again firing off. But that goes into the Calyrex on the other side. So Nils' Amoongus is going to be able to get onto the field essentially for free. Doesn't do too much damage. And Coridon, or excuse me, the Calyrex will knock out Coridon and Fluttermane on this turn. That is two boosts on the other end. I mean, maybe it's even nicer you, that you didn't get the guy last time around because now you've got a double one. And with that swap into the Amoongus at this point, this Calyrex just got that double attack boost and ways to potentially redirect. But having the first opportunity to see what Daniel has in the back, we do see two Pokemon that do have access to spread damage moves. Where um, it gets a little bit trickier here is those spread damage moves don't necessarily hit into this Calyrex quite the best. It has taken a little bit, a good chunk of damage, but still needs to be making up a lot of momentum in this case. Yeah, the, the only thing you can think is these, even if they are resisted attacks, right? You have a steal into uh, fire, and then of course fire into fire. There's just so much strong offensive pressure that the Beads of Ruin allows both Golden Go and the Shiyu to present that even if they are resisted, it still might be enough to get the knockout because of the, uh, the lowering of Calyrex's special defense. They definitely have a lot of momentum to make up at this point. And they also have to remember, both of these Pokemon are choice items. Respectfully, these specs onto the Golden Goat and the Scarf onto the Chi Yu. So once they click a move, they have to go through the rest of the its battle with that. So Protect coming out onto this Calyrex and assuming the, oh, I guess not the Amoongus here. The Amoongus just going for it. Calyrex is gonna stay nice and safe behind that Protect, but the Heat Wave a lot into the Amoongus. Yeah, that is all of Amoongus's HP getting knocked out. Nil seems not too shaken up about it. Still has the Pokemon advantage on his side. So uh, we'll be able to switch whatever Pokemon he wants onto the field that uh, Shadow Ball went towards the Protect on Calyrex's end. So Nils knows, hey, I got a team sheet available. I know Daniel's Pokemon are choice locked into Heat Wave and Shadow Ball. Now I know what he has to click every turn. <laughs> and at this point too, the Amoongus does go down, but you still have access 
to that Iron Hand so you can go ahead and just stop that Chiyu in its tracks. Or you can bring out your fourth and final Pokemon. If it is something like Urshifu, it could have done a lot of damage. But no, instead, it will be the Reggie Drago making an appearance. So we're talking about something that has the potential of doing a lot of damage to spread damage. That is it, but it would be doing less less damage depending on how much it's taken before it gets the opportunity to attack if it does want to eye up something like that Dragon Energy. Right, that Dragon Energy similarly working the way uh, Eruption or Water Spout, if you're familiar how those work, the more HP you have, the more damage it does. And Reggie Drago does absolutely output a lot of damage with that Life Orb Dragon Energy, uh, but you would be resisting Heat Wave, so it's not like Heat Wave would be doing too much damage affecting your Dragon Energy at first. Calyrex hangs on as a fire type that's resisted. Golden Goat goes for the Shadow Ball into Calyrex for the KO. Doesn't want any of those plus two attacks to hit the field. So now Nils is down to his final two Pokemon. And it's up to what Reggie Drago has locked in this turn. It's a Draco Meteor connecting out to Chiyu. And that's a one hit KO. Chiyu is gone and down for the count. And Daniel, only one Pokemon remaining. It is going to be the Golden Go, And it is locked in to a shadow ball. Iron Hands rejoins in. Nils does have that two to one. Iron Hands has taken a lot of damage at this point, though. Yeah, Iron Hands on the field. Can't go for the fake out like you mentioned. The Golden Goat does have Terra Normal, so that could uh, be a factor in future games since he's already used the Terra. So that's something to look forward to in a potential game two and game three. Uh, but you know that this Golden Goat is locked in to Shadow Ball, kind of. Uh, you know it's going to be a lot of strong damage output that the Golden Goat can go for. Iron Hands hangs on, though. It's not enough for the knockout. Wild Charge into Golden Goat, bringing it down to half HP. And that's going to be recoil damage as well, meaning Iron Hands knocks itself out. This Reggie Draco is minus two special attack into a Steel type. Golden Go hangs on. Now Reggie Draco's minus four and always has a chance of missing the the uh, uh, the, Dr the Draco anyway. This is this got a lot closer. Yeah, this Golden Go, I mean, since it's going for the Shadow Balls and it is Choice Specs, this is a lot of damage fired back and this Reggie Drago's taken so much. And Daniel to take the first game of the first match. What an incredible way to kick this off. Daniel effectively 2v4ing that match because of how rough the first couple of turns went as they were very clearly in Neil's favor. But the power of Choice-based items, they, they Lose your, you lose your flexibility, Sierra, but your damage output, it just becomes massively strong. And by not letting the Calgars get an attack off, remember, it gets two boosts to its attack. Then it protects, then it gets knocked out by Shadow Ball. It never actually got to take advantage at, of that as one ability. I mean, I'm even looking back at the one turn where there is the protect over onto the Calyrex and the Amoongus, which was something that could be redirecting a Shadow Ball. Well, all of a sudden it just goes for an attack on that turn and it gets KO before it even gets the opportunity to do anything because of this heat wave. Um, but it's still then a tough situation. The Calyrex stays around that, but then the final Pokemon you had in the back, unable to quite make that momentum. And yeah, these were two Pokemon that Daniel right away was forced to be the only two things. But I'm looking at that Reggie Drago and I don't know if that was necessarily the proper last one to bring into this. Sure, you dealt a lot of damage with the Draco Meteor, the first time around. I can't say that about the other <laughs> the other time. Yeah, definitely not into a steel type at minus two. Uh, but the, the choice scarf on Chiyu is just making it so difficult because there are so many Pokemon in similar speed tiers that it makes the Chiyu faster than Reggie Drago. It makes it faster than some of the other Pokemon Nils might have. And of course, you're lowering, naturally lowering the opponent's uh, special defense on the field thanks to the Beads of Ruin ability. So I think Nils might have kept the Reggie Drago in the back is kind of that that check because you knew you know draco meteor is always going to be able to one hit ko but uh the the choice scarf just meant that the the chiyu was getting so much damage off where we go into the second game is i'm looking at that reggie drago and it's like it did deal a good amount but if that was something like the urs in the back that could have been just I mean, the Chiyu just eliminated because right, yeah. you had the Choice Scarf to go for that Choice Scarf. So when I'm looking at adjustments, that's potentially it. And it's it really interesting to see how Daniel is able to kind of like bounce back through that with those two ends and just like how much pressure they were able to put on because right away, this Coridon, it, it set the Sage, it set the Sun, got a little bit of damage, and then the Calyrex was able to deal with it. So going into this game number two, 
get to see some adjustments coming out. All right, Nil's going to swap it up here, starting with the Amoongus next to his Kyrex Ice Rider at the beginning of game two, instead of bringing it in the back. And hey, it worked out for Daniel. Maybe these two Pokemon weren't the ones that gave him the W in game one, but if he won game one with this lead, might as well go Fluttermane Karadon yet again. I feel like this is really important as well because at the same time, this Fluttermane, you had that in prison to make sure the Calyrex isn't getting the speed dimension that it wants. Is it can't click that trick room if you're able to be shutting that down. So being able to right away yet again, okay, well, your Fluttermane, you can't go for an attack essentially on this turn because you're forced to in prison while I go ahead and fire off a Glacial Lance is absolutely massive. And since you do have the Amoongus next to the Calyrex, the Coridon, if you do want to be firing off a collision course, it won't necessarily do the most. You do have the opportunity, of course, to go for that Flare Blitz, but the Amoongus on the opposing end can try and just trash out of that weakness. All right, so let's get into our first turn of game two with Coridon terrestrializing into a fire type yet again, just like we saw in game one. It seems like these two Pokemon uh, in the Calyrex and Coridon, they just, they can't stand their original typing. They just way prefer uh, to be fire types. It's like the one you see, it's like anything uh, you can do, I can do better. You're a terrifier. <laughs> oh, I can do that too. And I, it, this makes a lot of sense because you have to make sure right away that you're not going to get too pressured from the opposing end of things, especially too, that's not going to be redirection from the Amoongus. Instead, just the protect. In prison, we're keeping things honest around here. There it is. And prison means that any shared moves between Fluttermain and the Pokemon on the other side, they cannot click. So if Nils went for a Trick Room on this turn, it would not be able to click it. Instead, Glacial Lance is the choice, and it brings Fluttermain down to its focus sash. So now you know that this Coridon, yeah, you've, you've gotten the Terra out, and the Flare Blitz pleasure is very real into the Amoongus. It will not appreciate a Terra Fire sun boosted flare blitz whatsoever but a decent amount of damage into it and the flutter main just being on a sliver of health puts a lot of pressure on but this is where we get a little adjustment and no redirection no rage powder exactly so amoongus is up to some tricks but will the karadon let it go for anything that's a sun boosted flare blitz and amoongus is down one hit ko two games in a row where nils has gotten hardly any value out of the mushroom Roasted mushrooms for dinner over here. That Amoongus is absolutely done for. Another round of Glacial Lance, since you didn't take the most amount, and that is again going to be a double KO. So you, sure, you lose one, but I think this is a pretty decent trade. This is where it did get tricky last time right. with that trade, considering the back. But since your Amoongus does get fainted this turn, you can now bring out a supportive Pokemon to try and deal with what you have to assume is that you and the Golden Go. Yeah, Chilling Nay boosting its attack by two stages on Nail's end, just like we saw in game one. So if Calyrex is ever able to actually successfully land an attack, it's going to be massive amounts of damage output. But because it's such a slow Pokemon, and Daniel, we saw in game one, those really fast, hard-hitting Pokemon in the back didn't really allow Calyrex to get any attacks. Well, that's the thing about the Calyrex, when you weren't able to get that trick room to get the situation that you wanted, sure, you go out on the offense, but uh, if you're not making it to your point in the turn to be able to fire off with that plus two boost you got, what's it really going to be doing for you? But this is where I'm curious if we get to see an adjustment coming out from Nils, because last time that we saw, it was the the Iron Hands and then the Reggie Drago that he had in the back, and an adjustment into something else could be really good, and the Urshfu is the one I wanted to see. So this one, sure, at this point, your surging strikes aren't necessarily doing the most, but a close combat into that Chiyu could be devastating. Oh, we actually see on, on Daniel's end, we have the benefit of his perspective with Power Gem as one of Golden Go's choice specs, uh, choice lock attacks that would be super effective into this Cower. So you wonder if Nils is going to anticipate that, smartly protecting on this turn, knowing that Daniel has to lock both of his attacks from his two Pokemon here. So you can't uh, just see what they lock in. The Dark Pulse does not get the flinch. Daniel going for it. Close combat for the one hit KO in response. This Chiyu can no longer create any shenanigans for the rest of this game. No more beads of ruin either. Some fish to go with that side of mushroom, I guess. And now Golden Goat will be the lock into the power gem, hitting into the protect. Sure, you have the move that's going to be that super effective amount of damage, 
but you now have the one to three Pokemon advantage. One thing to note the Urshifu as well is that Choice Scarf blocked, so you do need to be swapping it out on this turn since you wouldn't be able to hold, hit the Golden Go otherwise. So an opportunity last, it is in fact the Iron Hands. Right, and Daniel at least knows he's gonna have to swap there. So you can just freely target down the Calrus Ice Rider on the other end. Important to know that without the Beads of Ruin on the field, that is not enough for the knockout. So Golden Go goes down, and it looks scary for Nils at the start, but I don't know how this matchup is turning out. We are somehow in a game three where I felt like the winners of game one and game two could have been opposite. We'd still be in the same spot. I've never seen so many, there hasn't been as many Okos today as there has been in this match. Absolutely Very so fitting. fitting, but I love that Pokemon adjustment that Nils did. The Reggie Drago wasn't it for me, but that Urshifu being able to instantly just fire off a close combat was so important. You make sure that all of a sudden you don't have the Beads of Ruin, great call out with that Golden Go, and that you can't get this to you turn after turn to just kind of slowly but surely pick off your team when you do have a team that is a little bit slower where you would maybe like that trick room, but a great way to kind of just go around that. And even though the Amoongus, it didn't really do much. It was it was the greatest little distraction there on the field <laughs> while this Calyrex was able to just fire off a couple of Glacial Lances to be picking up this double KO to kind of just have that attack boost that you could take advantage of. Now, I'm trying to look at, at Daniel's team here, and you know, he's brought the same four Pokemon. You kind of understand the strategy. Have the have the lead, have your Sun Core at the beginning, and then let Chi and Golden Go handle the rest. But I'm wondering if you can make an adjustment, especially if Urshifu's gonna cause your Chi Yu so many problems, right? It resists Heat Wave, uh, Dark Pulse, you're just going for the flinch on, right? Maybe there's like a Reggie, or excuse me, a Raging Bolt adjustment with that Thunderclap having an answer into Urshifu. I mean, Am I up this? It is going to be just. I don't know. Because you it's have GU as a dark There's type. A you have two Terra though. normals on Daniel's end too, so the close combat just feels really strong into Daniel's team. It, it could be cool, and then as well, the one thing I would worry about is if you're not terrestrializing it, it is something that later in the turn you would be taking a Glacial Lance. That's a little bit tough. Right. That's you have a couple of Pokemon on your team that do not appreciate those Glacial Lances whatsoever. Though I don't necessarily think that I would mind that considering the Coridon. It's going in there, setting up the sun, but the damage that it did in that game too wasn't necessarily the most significant in comparison to what it was dealing in return but an adjustment to that raging bolt it definitely would be a pretty big choice going on into that all right this is this is an exciting round seven we have here at the world championships on day one daniel zicko and nils dunlop are certainly putting on a show for the audience we hope everybody's appreciating it at home the winner of this game three will have a guaranteed slot tomorrow in swiss day two in this winning in situation so a lot on the line for nils and daniel daniel's actually going to swap it up this time instead of bringing them in the back he's going to lead golden go and his fish <laughs> of, of hope and uh, pretty much got all of his knockouts in these first two games versus nils calorex and mungus yet again this is a lot of offensive pressure to be starting with from daniel's and and from nils with two slower pokemon not really best way to be kind of ending that and if you do go ahead and terrestrialize well that could be a little bit of tough i do think that we're going to see protect protect coming on out since it is two choice items that's where daniel loses a little bit of advantage going on into this you know now chiyu the heat wave seems kind of obvious but you can kind of start to play around that and be able to tear a next turn with the proper information and it's so crucial that while these two pokemon are choice locked on the field neither of them are the Fluttermane that has Imprison, which is one way to stop Calyrex setting up Trick Room. So if you try to swap out on this turn, this could be the turn Nils sets up Trick Room. You might be one turn too late. Yeah, and if you're all of a sudden getting dimensions in your favor, that could be huge. At this point, there hasn't been sun, so the Chiyu damage with that Heat Wave is gonna be smaller, and since it is the Choice Scarf as opposed to the Choice Specs, that's a little bit less of the damage capabilities. And the Amoongus on the other end, the sea one of them is going to be drastalizing you don't want to leave the calyx out to dry so we will see that one go ahead and lock it in not wanting to take the super effective from that heat wave 
I'm eyeing up whether Yamugas makes it on through because if Yamugas can't redirect that secondary hit from the Golden Go, this can get dangerous. All right, so Mungus is going to be able to redirect the I single miss. target. Heat Wave, Counter X avoids. That's not the crucial one. Amoongus hangs on with no sun. Amoongus is able to survive the turn. It will get burned, so it's going to take more damage. But Golden Go's Power Gem goes into the Amoongus instead. The miss, it's... It's fine. The Amoongus survival is not okay. You wanted that hit into the Calyrex. Right. You needed that damage, and now Trick Room has been set. It took until game three, but Nils has finally gotten the dimensions that he wants in his favor. And now this Calyrex is free to be firing off first with these Glacial Lances, and the Iron Hand joining the fray is only going to be adding to it. And you have this turn where you can go for the Faco to be kicking things off, or even just go for pure damage, considering this two wouldn't appreciate either of your attacks anyways. Daniel has tried so hard to stop Nils's game plan of setting Trick Room up, whether that be knocking out the threats before they can even, you know, get started rolling or literally with Imprison on the Flutter main. And here we are in game three with Trick Room and two really slow Pokemon on Nils's side. And what's also a little bit difficult is sometimes to survive the Trick Room situations, you might go for Protects and kind of space them out and just kind of survive past some terms. But Daniel has such an offensive team, and out of the four Pokemon that he brought, only one of them has Protects, and so Fluttermane did forego that to have this Trick Room and a Prison combination. Bringing the Fluttermane out, there could have been the potential of maybe trying to reverse a Trick Room, but the Glacial but Lance bringing it down to a Focus Sash is making that a very moot dream real fast. Sure, you get past this Drain Punch, but you have to go on from there. And Power Gem, remember, there's no Beads of Ruin on the field anymore, so Calyrex is able to take that comfortably, even though it's super effective as a Fire type. Two, two Ghost types means they don't care about the Drain Punch, but any amount of damage is going to be able to pick up the KO on Fluttermane, so Glacial Lance picks that up, brings going to go down to under. This is the first time Nils has not gotten a double KO, He's only going to get one boost off of, off of Chilling Nay, but it uh, looks like he's in such a strong spot that you don't need two boosts anyway. Wild Charts taking out Golden Go. We can share the wealth a little bit here. The ones that are left behind by the Golden Go as it exits the field. And with that double KO on this turn, Daniel down to final two Pokemon. Coridon Chiyu, you're going to bring the sun, but I think you're going to get burnt from this one. Coridon, the only one able to protect. And already this Calyrex with an attack boost. Yeah, there should be two turns of Trick Room remaining. Calyrex, if it wants to go uh, for a you know strong attack here with its a boost, as well as the uh, the Chi Yu is very much threatened from a Drain Punch on the Iron Hands on the other spot. So as long as Trick Room is up, choi a Choice Scarf, that's your worst nightmare is Trick Room. <laughs> and you haven't used Terrestrialization for Daniel, but I feel like we have to see the same situation that we've gotten to see in the other matches to where it's spent onto this Coridon because again you're staring down this Calyrex Ice Rider on the other end and that does not look great so here is going to make it official get it this beautiful little crown above the Coridon's head yeah anyway the Chi Yu's Terra type is grass anyway so it doesn't help you against the Glacial Lance uh, nah. Calyrex Ice Rider on the other end so Daniel going three for three Terra Fire Coridon in this series. Chiyu takes a lot of damage. The follow-up hit from Drain Punch is going to be more than enough for Nils to get that KO, bring Iron Hands back up effectively to a full HP. And it's just the Coridon versus the rest of Nils' team here in Game 3. F Sun boosted Terra Fire on the other end, but this Calyrex is going to be able to go down, but the question is what is that last Pokemon on Nils' side? And if this Coridon can do it enough, because you are still staring down this Iron Hand that right. can deal a really good amount of damage back with something like that low kick. The Urshavu is going to be the first, fourth and final Pokemon in this equation. It is the Choice Scarf, so again, we talk about the, maybe the Scarf isn't the greatest thing <laughs> in this Trick Room situation, but you, both of these Pokemon are at full health, and even if you're able to take on one, you're going to get hit hard by the other. You live past the first hit, though. Yeah, he gets, a, gets a hang on through the low <laughs> kick. Collision course into Nils's or Shifu. Not enough for the knockout there. And her Shifu takes the glory in the last turn of the game here in round seven. Our EUIC champion Nils Dunlop will continue his run tomorrow in day two of Honolulu. Daniel might have set up the sun, but it's only shining on Nils after.